Welcome back. Testimony underway in the historic hush money trial of Donald Trump. Historic in the fact that no other American president has faced criminal charges and a jury verdict rendered by the citizens he once served. On the witness stand, former National Enquirer publisher David Pecker confirmed his catch-and-kill collaboration with Trump regarding accounts of his sexual liaisons with porn star Stormy Daniels and former playmate Karen McDougal. Of critical note, Pecker uh, conceded he agreed to suppress the stories to help Trump's campaign, despite the fact that publishing the accounts of Trump's alleged lovers would have sold a colossal number of magazines. Panel, the defense contends hush money was paid to avoid family embarrassment and not, as the prosecution claims, to achieve political gain. All right, Chris Tritico. <laughs> so, look, th this case is embar certainly embarrassing for the president. It's, it's not the strongest case they have against Donald Trump. And actually, if, if his lawyers would pay attention to the facts and, and go to the places where they need to go, he might just win this case. Um, they they keep playing to the president. If they keep playing to President Trump and not playing to the law and the facts, they're going to lose. If they would play to the to the law and cross-examine these witnesses on the facts and the way they need to win, they might just win this case. Holly, I said in the tease, uh, he may beat the rap, but not the ride. And the ride is, he's sitting in a courtroom <laughs> until June. Right, and that seems to be kind of the point of this, and, and I'm glad Chris made these points, because uh, there is a legal problem with this case. Um, it, it can be extremely distasteful to hear what happened here, but it's not actually legal, illegal to make these kind of uh, payments for non-disclosure. Um, Pecker's testimony actually is problematic for the prosecution because he also talked about all of these celebrities that he helped in the same way to close down these stories that would be embarrassing for them and he was helping Donald Trump do these things long before he had presidential ambitions so that really kind of undermines the case so you can you can find Trump <laughs> distasteful and at the same time realize there's a legal problem with this particular case. Tomorrow Bell our friend Bill King seems to think that this type of disclosure uh, is eroding some of former President Trump's support with evangelicals. Do uh, you think there's any merit to that argument? I don't know if Captain Saber Ho's merit is even worth saving anymore. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is the part of this, like, I, like Chris said, whether he beats the rap or not, it's the rap. This is the first time in his life he has been forced <clears throat> to be somewhere for over 30 seconds where he doesn't want to be all day. That is the punishment for him. I don't think y'all get it. This man doesn't do anything that he doesn't want to do. Like Chris said, his lawyers are not even trying the case. They trying what he wants them to try, which may end up making him lose because everybody's afraid to tell him, shut the hell up. Charles Blaine has made the backfire argument, which is every time they uh, do something to the former president that may be perceived by some as unfair and singling out, he is martyred. Politically. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so, especially on something like this. Like, it's it, it's public relations. How many celebrities do we know pay for stories to be quashed? How many celebrities do we know pay for stories to be created so that they look better? Taylor Swift paid for stories to cover up her jet usage so that people wouldn't criticize her for the carbon footprint she was leaving. So, you know, we see these things happen all the time, and they do it because it does cause irreparable harm to their business or their family if these stories come out. So it's not uncommon that this happens. It just happens that this guy happened to be president. Um, and I do think that... That it does you know solidify the support of his base I don't think that it erodes the evangelical support because he has said and done a lot of things that evangelicals didn't like before and this is not the first time Paul Castro breathes a sigh of relief he didn't have to talk about this <laughs> <laughs>